Welcome to the Online Zone. I'm your host, Julio Rodriguez, right here on Card Player TV. Today we're going to be talking to Mosin Chicago Cards 1 Chirania. And let's go to him on the phones. Mosin, how are you doing? I'm um, doing pretty good. Now, Mosin, uh, you're sitting in seventh place in our Online Player of the Year rankings. And I know a couple uh, weeks ago when we emailed back and forth, you had told me that you wanted to get this sewn up and uh, be at the top of the board by now. So what's going on? Um, it didn't go the way I planned, <laughs> mostly because uh, G. Burrow and Moorman and Sean Deep are just way too sick and on a really disgusting heater and uh, trying to focus live on a lot of WPT events. So it uh, hasn't been going the way I planned, but hopefully with Scoop and the 5K today, I'll get back into the race. Now, I want to talk about you focusing more on live play. It seems like those three guys, I mean, while they do every once in a while step out, side of their computer and uh, play a little live, it seems like you've been really stepping out and, uh, you know, trying to make your mark on at least the World Poker Tour. Uh, I, I believe it was in December when you cashed at Bellagio, and then you went deep in uh, the Biloxi tournament, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. I got uh, down to the final three tables at Bellagio, and then down to the final two in Biloxi. But, uh, I got ran pretty bad at deep. Are you finding the transition to live poker uh, pretty easy, or are there um, new challenges for you? Yeah, well, actually, when I started playing first, I was a live player, um, so I would play a lot of cash, like live, until I recently started playing online, maybe the last two years, so I think I was originally a live player anyways, and since those WPTs are so deep stacked now, as opposed to a couple years ago, um, I think it's a lot easier to play those, because it almost feels like a cash game sometimes. Now, you were in Foxwoods recently, and I don't know if I want to bring up bad memories, but uh, you were the bubble boy at Foxwoods recently. You want to talk about that at all? Um, yeah, sure. I uh, was doing really well the first uh, three days. I was probably at the top of the leaderboard, and uh, I was playing super aggressive and uh, basically an Internet player um, who I didn't know who, what, what his Internet name was at the time. Um, raised on we we're down to 31 and we both had around like a little bit over 400,000 at 255 and he raised in the cutoff and uh I looked down at two kings and uh usually I might slow play here even like I really didn't really care if there was a bubble but um I might slow play it in general but with my image I decided I was going to get action from a lot worse um and I knew that if I re-raised he might maybe try to take advantage of the bubble and come over the top and commit a lot of chips before folding so I mean I looked down at two kings naturally I re-raised and he um, I made it he made it thirteen thousand I made it forty three and he made it one thirteen then I moved in for another three hundred thousand on top and he had two aces I mean there's not much I could do I think it was probably for the chip lead at the time and then I had like five big blinds and I moved in with queen ten and I lost to ace eight it's pretty bad <laughs> for I mean is there is there ever a temptation to just to just sit back and 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 see what develops. Uh, on a spot like that, or is it just always the play for first mentality? Um, who cares what happens at this point? It's all about first place. Um, well, with those recent WPT finishes, um, the reason I'm playing so much live is because I have that play for first mentality. So um, that's what it was. Like I could have probably just called and the flop was ace high. I probably would have been able to get away after calling a street. Um, but I don't know, it's just that mentality that I, like, I win that pot, I'm the chip leader, and, like, my table was very soft outside of, like, Barry Greenstein. Um, so it was, like, one of those spots where if I won, I mean, like, we'd be down to 30, I would have busted him on the bubble, and then I probably could have really just ran over the table because a lot of people would probably be trying to play for the TV table with three tables left. And so, I mean, it was it was a play for first mentality, which is why... I got it all in on the bubble. All right, well, that definitely showed that you're not afraid to go broke in that spot. Um, switching back to online play, I've noticed throughout your results that you've really done well on absolute poker, or more specifically, the serious network. Um, and is it a case where people aren't shying away from that kind of a um, site right now or because the action's too good and there's, there's too many overlays and... Or is it just a, a matter of uh, you just happen to run well on that site? Um, it's a combination. I've happened to run pretty well on that site so far this year and in general. Um, and, I mean, it's just, like, I'll only, like, 
I think the only, they have a big uh, the 1K on Wednesdays and an 80K, and then they have the the 200K and a 500 on Sunday. Those are basically the only tournaments I play. Um, and like the field in the 1K is generally a little bit tougher than the other ones on Stars and Tilt because there's only like 150 players, but the structure's really good early on, and uh, then later on, I mean, since there are basically a lot of tough players left, it just kind of comes down to who gets the cards, and uh, I guess I've been getting lucky to catch some cards in them. Now, with those 1Ks, I mean, is there are there any soft spots at all? I mean, is this oh, a tournament absolute? that... Yeah, on any 1K, the Monday 1K on Full Tilt or the Super Tuesday on Stars, I mean, is, is there any spot where, you know, uh, an amateur can come in and even feel remotely good about his chances? Um, and, and, I mean, yeah, like, I've, I I guess, are you saying that, okay, it's like, can an amateur find a good spot in that 1K? Yeah, I, I mean, mean there's is there any dead money you. whatsoever? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of satellite players and... I mean, a lot of the people you'll see sometimes win the 1K or final table, the 1K will have satellited in or, or like, I mean, on any given time, just like for one tournament, there's always going to be some satellite players that win. So there's always like dead money. And I mean, the structures are still good in those 1Ks. Um, I'm full tilt to give you 5,000 chips now. And um, the stars one gives you 20 minute blinds and the UB one is, it gives you 5,000 and it's really slow. So the structure is really good. So, I mean, there's like, like it's you're not going to get outplayed like severely by top pros so i mean it's always like it's definitely worth it unlike the smaller tournaments where sometimes it's just like the the top pros will just be really aggressive and if you're an amateur you're going to get outplayed more often than not sometimes you can just sit there and wait in those one case because structure is so good well that being said do you still feel like these are the like elite tournaments online uh for the true like high stakes multi-table tournament player um, as far as daily tournaments, yeah, I think the, I mean, the 100 rebuys and the 1Ks are basically the, the biggest tournaments for high stakes players. Um, and then, I mean, now, I mean, there's like scoop, which is, which is basically, I think, like with the, with the good scoop structure and the high buy-ins, that's basically what it is for high stakes players as far as like the best tournaments right now and probably like a good like way to see who the, like the top players are. Well, we mentioned earlier that you're in sitting in seventh place right now. Is online player of the year something that you're going to make a run for, or is the the volume that is put in by you know Sean Deeb, Steve G. Burrow Gross, and uh, uh, Chris Mormon are are these people who are just like robots? Can they even be stopped at this point? Um, I don't know. I mean, G. Burrow doesn't put in that much vol. Like, I'm pretty sure I put in more volume than G. Burrow. He's just insane at poker but um yeah it's probably something i want to make a run for because um like it's there's the with a scoop like there's a 5k today and a 10k at the end of the week and if you can win if i can win one of those and make sure g bar or someone doesn't get second like it gives you a really <laughs> good shot to go back into the top three and then there's an f tops coming up like i'm definitely going to try to focus more on live with the Bellagio and Monte Carlo and the World Series this summer, but I think that if I can get a couple, like a good scoop and a good F-top uh, run, then I'd have a really good chance, but yeah, those guys are going to be impossible to beat. They're <laughs> they're very good, and I mean, like Sean Deeb and Moorman put in a lot of volume, so. It seems like that's also been the problem throughout the year with uh, some of these high-profile tournaments, where the, whether it be the 1Ks or the $100 rebuys, is that one of you guys will final table only to see another one of you guys across the table. So it's like, I mean, re just recently, Steve Gross finished like fifth in the uh, in the absolute 1K to Sean Deeb. I mean, yeah, it's tough I to mean, pick up points when the guy ahead of you is, is winning the whole tournament. Yeah, that I mean, that happened to me. I got third, I got second in the 100 rebuys, six max on full tilt, and I lost to G-Bro, and then I got third in the 1K, and I ended up losing the Mormon, so I didn't really call climb at all in the rankings because I think I was third at the time and the two people ahead of me were the the two people that picked up more points and beat me so <laughs> yeah that does happen <laughs> all right well Mosin thank you for joining us today on the online zone and I wish you the best of luck with the rest of the year thank you very much bye-bye I'd like to thank you guys for watching card player tv's online zone I'm Julio Rodriguez and thanks for watching